So uh, after a minute, I'm even losing interest in us now. Yeah, <laughs> I'm out of here. See ya. <laughs> Don't worry, that gets edited out. Well, usually. <clears throat> no, 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 that, that won't be on the pod, but just the, the lead up to our YouTube live. Everyone, welcome to week 11 of Road to 272. I, uh, I'm, I'm all about the self-deprecating humor tonight. Let's let's do it. <laughs> all right. So my left is Mr. Bryant tonight. He are, no, you're not leading. Are you, are you second? Come on. One above me. One above you. The one above you. Above you is Trent. He, uh, he might have red hair, but he apparently knows sports betting a little bit. The, you, the top two have red hair. What are you talking about? <laughs> I don't have any hair. <laughs> okay. Red beard. <laughs> Two two redheads, red beards from Iowa. Never would have guessed. Mm-hmm. And then right above me is is Uncle Joe Hosky over there. Hi. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Greetings, everybody. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> Promise we're a friendly bunch, but the guy up top is not, I guess. Joey's just vibing tonight. I am. That's, that's what I you're doing. A, wrote a blog. I listened to some rap music. I'm drinking some vodka. Yeah. I'm ready. I'm making my picks live, baby. I'm letting you guys talk me into shit. Let's do this. Yeah. I feel like I'm buying a new car tonight. That Drew sounds like some... someone just didn't do their homework this week. Hey, just talk me into things. <laughs> what in the fuck is this? Oh, that is funny. So, yeah, Joey, you mentioned uh, a blog there. Why don't you do our socials and tell us what your blog is about? Yeah. Uh, as always, search us on Facebook, Pulse of the Heartland, and Instagram and Twitter, at Heartland Pulse. If you're watching now, you know how to get there on YouTube. If you don't, if you aren't watching now, just search Pulse of the Heartland. We're on in the zone dot studio. That's our new landing site for our website. That's the new network we're with in the zone uh, sports media. And tomorrow <laughs> we'll be on all of your major podcast platforms. And I wrote a blog tonight about just recapping um, and introducing sorry recapping ufc 281 and introducing myself plus the rest of the podcast to kind of the in the zone media stuff i know uh everyone else is either going to contribute via this or write their own blogs and they can reintroduce themselves or whatnot but yeah check it out if you're into ufc stuff but if you're not into ufc stuff and you want to see other like nfl power rankings which we're going to go over some uh a lot of nfl stuff tonight obviously we're on road to 272 but some wwe stuff there's nhl stuff nba stuff we got it all covered on in the zone uh just go to in the zone dot studio check out all the blogs that are on there all the writers are amazing and also check out our twitter for in the zone and then the different writers that are on there as well. You can find all that on in the zone dot studio. Um, and, and Dylan, I think he was, he was, uh, kind of doing some interviews tonight, so he will not be joining us tonight, but the plan is for Monday for him to join us. I am not positive. Um, I'm not positive, uh, if I'm going to be joining, but at least he should be on Monday and you guys can interview him to your little heart's desire. I should be on at some point, but, um, I, I believe he can, uh, he can correct me, I guess next week, but I believe he's still trying to look for writers for like NHL and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I know tonight he's talking to some people for <clears throat> web developing and social media type stuff. So if there's anybody that's interested in that, that kind of wants to get their foot in and, and hopefully eventually make it a, p- a paying thing, uh, talk to Dylan, t- uh, Main thing is reach out to in the zone on uh, on Twitter, or reach out to one of us on Twitter too. We can get you hooked up with the right guy. So I was gonna say not to give you too many like addresses and shit to go to or anything like that. If you want to be a part of in the zone, just reach out to us at Heartland Pulse on Twitter or find us on Facebook. And all the socials that we name off at the beginning, and we can get you hooked up. That that's not a big deal. We'll uh, that way you're not <clears throat> trying to go seven different places to try and find shit. You you'd hate to be the guy that we gave you directions on how to do this, and in two years we're sitting at the Super Bowl interviewing Justin Jefferson for a second Super Bowl victory, and you're like, man, I wish we could be doing that. That's you know that's going to be us sometime. Yep. I'd rather be at the Masters. That's just me. The waste man, oh, okay. classic. Oh I will gosh. go to all the UFC stuff. Doing an example, and it's like, oh, we have to outdo each other on this one. <laughs> yeah. I got a pissing contest at my own job. I don't need this, Trent. Yep. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> uh, funny. Um, 
we will start out with let's go the power rankings. Um, if you go to In the Zone Media, um, we said the website already. Uh, one of our contributors, Peter Caffrey, he does a weekly power ranking. My opinion, this is the best one I saw, to be honest. Oh. With <laughs> Not Interesting. To be- not so what were the Vikings at it on your favorite power rankings? No, well, no, it's just that there's not stupid things like the 49ers are third and, and that type of crap, too. This actually seems like a guy who's trying to do real power rankings instead of trying to get attention. So, But, yes, number one, I think we can agree on the number one and two. You can switch them around, and I think both of us would be happy about it. I don't it, – it's power ranking, so it doesn't mean shit, but – you know, I, I feel like it's somewhat level-headed. Number one, Peter has the Vikings at number one. Uh, they just, they just had a, you know, they they've won seven straight. Um, had to had a p- big win against a Super Bowl favorite um, on the road. Had that r- lucky horseshoe sticking out of their ass and still, you know, won the game by that. Um, and then number two, Bryant seems to think they should be number one is the Kansas City Chiefs. So you can't be you can't be happy being number two, huh? That's what makes champions champions. I go for gold medals. I don't talk about the silver medalist Joe Burrow all the time and happy that he's doing okay this year. I go for golds. Yeah, but he has. He probably has a cool. Right out of Trent. He probably has a cool silver, um, silver medal uh, as a tire on Sundays when he walks in. Exactly. That and whatever the hell else he's wearing for his pregame is stupid shit. So. Is there is there anybody that dis- – okay, so let's round out the top five. We got one Vikings, two Kansas City Chiefs, three Philadelphia Eagles, four Miami Dolphins, five Buffalo Bills. Is there anybody that disagrees those shouldn't be the five that are in the top five? Like that. I wouldn't have dropped the Bills out either. I'd have kept them in the top five, but put them at five. Um I had the Dolphins in my top five last week, too, and then they come away with another win. Philly, I mean, they lost to Washington. They've got a good defense. I mean, Washington almost took down Minnesota. Um, And then, yeah, I like Kansas City and Minnesota as one and two. Uh, I mean, you can make every argument to flip-flop those two. I, I, I totally agree with those. Yeah. Yeah. The the only ones I think you might have an argument just going through, and this is – Somewhat simply by standings is the Titans at six and three. One of their losses early on the Giants by one point is now looking very good. Um, but I mean, again, they don't have that prolific. Should be they be the number one team? I don't think so. They still got question mark at quarterback. Even though Tannehill, Tannehill is serviceable, but I mean, if they pick up any of the all star <coughs> quarterbacks in the league, they're you know they would immediately be a larger threat. But I don't think they have the passing game there. And then. The Ravens have dropped some easy games, so I, I, I agree with them not being there quite yet. Um, but I mean, they're they're creeping up there right now with Lamar. He, I'll be honest, man. He he has some games where he's really on, and then some games that they're he's he's kind of off. But I mean, they're six and three, and their three losses are Dolphins by four, Bills by three, Giants by four. All teams that have six plus wins. So I mean. Once they get over that hump and beat, like the Vikings, it, luck or not, they did beat one of those teams that is at the top of the league right now. Ravens haven't proven they have. They've beaten everyone else that they should. They, they need to take that next step, though. Brian, I have, I have a question. Yeah. I have you mentioned answer. Ryan Tannehill. Did, did you know that he was a wide receiver? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait, where did he play? Where did he play? Texas A&M, Texas Aggie. A&M. Oh. With all those yell leaders instead of cheerleaders, you know, when you go to a football game, you're like, "There's not enough dudes here." That's why you watch Texas A&M. <laughs> Texas A&M is a cult, but uh, uh, as far as the top five, yeah, I, I like it. Other than Miami is not number one, but it'll prove itself in the playoffs, so we'll be fine. But I'm also missing the Chargers and the Buccaneers from this, which are my two Super Bowl teams. I don't understand why they aren't in the top five. So <laughs> there's that. But well, nah, I, I like if, the top five. It was a good top five. If Brady would have gotten divorced earlier, they would be a little higher. He's undefeated since he's got divorced. So yep. in Chargers, unfortunately, they're getting healthier. They're only going to get tougher. So yep. I do like having the Vikings at number one now so that in two weeks when the Chiefs are number one because they beat better teams, um, the Vikings fans aren't just crying the whole season. So, uh, yeah, I like that. Who are the Chiefs playing that that are better than on the Vikings schedule? Everyone in the AFC. AFC. You said at the beginning of the season. We've said it throughout the season. The AFC is way better than the NFC. 
Okay, so our next two games, our next three games are Dallas, which they're six and three. Mm-hmm. Um, New England, which is AFC, they're not great, but they're still mm-hmm. they're there. Mm-hmm. And then the New York Jets, which is a top AFC team. So and then the Chiefs. three playoff right. the season Touché. ends today. The, the season ends today. Those are three playoff teams. Yeah. Touche. Then, then we have. So I'm not. I'm not saying the Chiefs aren't playing anybody good, yeah. but you just made it seem like we're playing Houston and Jacksonville and Atlanta. Like, come on. The next three. Give some respect. The next three and games Atlanta. Today. What a dick. I'm out. That's Fuck a- you guys. <laughs> hold on, well, Joey. We'll, we'll hold on real quick. We're gonna sort this. We're gonna put the Vikings fans on one side and the non-Vikings fans on the other. <laughs> um, Chiefs next three games at Chargers in prime time. Then the uh, Super Bowl champions from last year, the Rams, the following week, and then oh, runner-up Bengals the following week on the road. So, oh, so I'd say maybe two, two of the three are are decent opponents. The the Rams yeah. are well, just. I'll correct it: two decent opponents and one that just lost, well, that won a ring last year. So, I mean, cakewalk. You can't live in the past. <laughs> you can't live in the past. Oh yeah, you told me that. Except for when we have to look back four, four or five years when Joe Burrow actually was relevant. A wise man yeah. once told me we're playing the schedule. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're playing the schedule That's again. Exactly Let, right. Let's get to some picks here. <laughs> All righty, I suppose I'm ready to I'm ready to slug this out with Joey though. Thank but like you. I said, I really, I really don't care one either either way. One or two; those are the two teams I feel should be one and two. Mm-hmm. And if you put the Chiefs at one, I'd say yeah, that's probably right. I will say just by like looking and watching the games, I think the Chiefs look like a better team. But Jesus Christ, those Vikings! You guys are grinding out games. So I don't know who to be happier for from the two fan bases that aren't the Atlanta Falcons. So um yeah. Who's the team that has never won a Super Bowl? The Atlanta I would Falcons. think being a big ten fan and low scoring games and defensive and grinding thing out, Joey would be seeking out these Vikings games to watch and get the chubbiest of all chubs of all time watching these things. <laughs> yeah. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, first game. First game is tomorrow night. Ten, Jesus. Ten, Tennessee at Green Bay. Green Bay are three point favorites with a total of forty one points. Joey, I want you. Oh no, we have to. We you can't go first tonight because we have to convince you. No, I'll go first. That's fine. I already picked this one because I hate Green oh, Bay you? and uh, I think they suck a lot of dick, and because it's just fucking pouring, pouring snow up there. Uh, I'm going to go with the team that runs the ball, maybe second best in the league, if not the best. I'm going to go with Tennessee, uh, and I'm going to take that money line. I think they win. Just control the ball, control the clock or something? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think there's much to it other than just give Derrick Henry the ball, let him hurt people, and then just keep moving on. They're going to have to pound it over under 120 rushing yards for Derrick Henry. Mm Mm-hmm. Over under, what do you say? Yeah. Uh, over. 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 Lots okay. over. Actually, yeah. yeah, I'm gonna make that pick to Cub right now. I'm gonna yeah. Derrick Henry with like 200 yards tomorrow night. Green Bay's defense sucks. Yeah, I'm right there with you, Joey. Mm-hmm. The prop right now, the official prop is Derrick Henry over under 100 yards. Really? Over. Easy. Uh, is it because of all the snow or what? The. Uh, the only thing that in, in what I base my pick on, because I'm going to go with the under 41 points here. One, it's Thursday night unders. I'm starting to feel it again here. But um, these are two of the slower paced teams in the league. And I think when you add in that the Titans are going to grind out, you know, a 10 minute drive and, and that's how they're going to score. I think there's just got, not going to be enough time for either one of these to just, I mean, neither one of them are gunslingers this year. They pass when they need to, but it's just, you know, Derrick Henry, look what they did to the Chiefs. They controlled the clock and they kept it to a, uh, what, 17 17 until it got to overtime. Mm-hmm. So, I, I mean, I don't see the Green Bay doing anything much more than that. So, I am, uh, I'm taking Green Bay to cover for two reasons. Number one, I, I, I haven't been doing good on this betting thing. So, me vote, me putting money on Green Bay, hopefully that means they'll lose. And number two, this is just classic Green Bay. Um, you know, they suck half the season and then all of a sudden they come back and make a run for the playoffs. And it's just, I just feel, feel Green Bay is going to be there at the end when it comes to at least to, at, to a wild card spot. I don't think 
the Vikings will trip up enough for them to get the division, but they'll sneak into the playoffs and, and make me hate them even more. So we're, we're about to get that media quote that, that, that they love from Aaron Rodgers, the L E A R E L A X, the relax. Yeah. We're going to get something like that after this type of game. Mm-hmm. You know, it's awesome because the half first half of the season, everyone just buries him about how he sucks. And then he gets one win over the Cowboys. And oh my God, he's amazing. Let's get this guy's making a play, playoff run and they're real contenders now. He went up in my power rankings, that's for sure. He didn't in the in the zone by Peter, so that's the main thing. Let's go, Peter. Yeah, I, I took Tennessee to cover that three. Uh, I don't know why. I think Tennessee's going to win. I should have just picked the money line on that and won more money. But yeah. uh, I got Tennessee covering three on this. I hope I lose this one. I really do. That's I, I usually don't, but I hope I lose this one. All right, next game: Rams at your defending champion, super champions of the world, Rams uh, at the New Orleans Saints. Four point favorites are the Saints. Total of thirty nine. Trent, what are you doing? Um, I hate this game. Uh, I wanted to. <laughs> take the under but when i was looking the under was like 38 and a half couldn't do it i don't trust new orleans to win by a lot the rams are terrible they don't have cooper cup i took money line on this i i took new orleans money line what you said there is exactly why i took the new orleans spread there's no cooper cup i don't think it sounded like stafford was out again with concussion protocol today um, I, I don't know. I don't think, I don't think the Rams have anybody. So take a new Orleans minus four. And I forgot to say Clark took the Tennessee money line. Solid. Joy, who do you got? Uh, I took the under in this one. Did we skip a game? Did we skip? Yeah. Cleveland or Buffalo? Okay. Yeah. We'll, that's fine. We'll go back to it. Okay. That's fine. Uh, just make sure. Uh, but yeah, I took the under in this one because of Cooper cup being out there. Maybe no Matt Stafford. Uh, there might as well not be a quarterback in New Orleans and Aaron Donald. So I'll well, take the under. Dalton, Andy Dalton slander. Me and Trent will not stand for that. Okay. He's yep. terrible, and I don't understand why they haven't played Jameis. Uh, and I don't also I understand have heard why rumors they even... that they are this week. Well, well, then give me four interceptions and four touchdowns from Jameis. I'll be honest with Andy Dalton. The uh, the worse he's got at football, the more handsome he's got, or vice versa. <laughs> he's got he's focused more on his vanity, and he's got a worse. Well, either way, that guy's handsome as hell right now. I don't know what it is. It maybe it's the little gray in his beard, but he stinks at football, and so do the Rams. Um, I have the under as well. Just like everything, like Trent said, injuries. Just neither of them playing well. Mm-hmm. I don't see it. Clark took that, the under. That was also. actually my first bet of the week that I put in was that under. Yeah, I could. I wanted to so bad, but I was like, 38 and a half is so low for an NFL game. I couldn't do it. 17 to 14, scared, I'm man. telling you. Exactly. Yeah, Clark took the under on that one. Which one did we skip here? Cleveland at Buffalo. Yep. Buffalo, yep. Well, eight point favorites, total 41 and a half. They're supposedly going to have what, three to six feet of snow? Three to five mm-hmm. feet of snow? Mm-hmm. Lake yes. effect snow. And that's, you're not misspeaking. That's feet, not that's inches. Feet. We've Rex had that Ryan out. is excited. That's that is nothing. We've had that here in South Dakota, Trent. We know what that's about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hell, you got like a foot yesterday. Uh, only about five inches. Yeah, that's what she said. <laughs> average. Yeah, it's just it's average, bud. <laughs> no, no one can complain about average. Um, I took the Cleveland plus eight. Uh, the weather's going to be shitty. Uh, it's going to be hard for Allen to throw the ball. Um, I don't. I think, I think Buffalo right now is – they're still great, but they've got a lot of injuries on defense. Um, they'll win, but I don't think they'll win by eight. So. I like it. I, nice. I took I took the under. Uh, with that weather, um, it's going to be low scoring. I got it at 41 and a half, so I hammered the under on that one. I, this was my second pick of the week after hearing about the blizzard effect and lake effect snow coming in. The only thing that that worries me is that both teams are pretty decent running the ball. So, I mean, this might work to both their advantages, but, um, yeah, I mean, under 41, that's what I got. I took Cleveland because I think with Nick Chubb that they just control the line of scrimmage and just run, run, run. 
Mm-hmm. But then Bryant just said that they are both good at running the ball. I didn't think – I thought that uh, Josh Allen was passing it so much because they were bad at running the ball. Well, I don't know. I, I guess maybe not, that's that's part of the running. I mean, he was even doing it this last Saturday. I mean, you're, you're right. You're right. Yeah, him running the ball, that makes more sense. But I was going to say, running, I don't think – Their running backs aren't great. Um Maybe Hines. I don't. Hines didn't really do anything against the Vikings. A Singletary really that did the most when it comes to running backs. Um, but their run defense is not good at all. Chubb could have right. two hundred yards against them. Right. Um. Bill, Bills are t- tenth in the league in average rushing per game. So, yeah, you're right. I, I mean that yeah. that was just a feel because it always just seems like like when they're playing the Chiefs or you're watching the Vikings game, it's like, geez, they can kind of they they can choose to run it well, but Allen is so good at passing. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. they, and refs will call holding. And I think it has to do a lot with, like you said, with Josh Allen being able to run the ball too, because he gets like sixty yards a game. So yeah. that would yeah. it, that would go into the one hundred twenty nine yards that they get. So that makes here. sense. He Nick, had Nick fifty said. yards in two plays in overtime yeah. versus the Vikings so. on Sunday. Nick yeah. Chubb, Regard- uh, go ahead. Oh, this is it. Regardless, I am taking Cleveland with the my or the plus eight. Um, I. I think they keep it close. I want to pick them to win, but also I really want to see the Bills go deep in the playoffs. I just think they're super fucking fun to watch and exciting. Um, so, yeah, I, yeah. I'm i going to go with Cleveland keeping it close. Who's Clark at? Clark's got Cleveland plus seven. He got plus seven and a half. I, I actually got it at plus eight and a half. Nice. Um, Nick Chubb, over under 53 and a half yards. Over. 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 That might be a decent prop to put in, boys. Yeah. Shit, he almost missed that last week, and then he had a 60-yard run for a touchdown. Hey, all the yards all right. count all the same, my friend. Mm-hmm. All right, Philly, minus seven at Indianapolis, the total 44. Um, if I remember correctly, I took the – yeah, I took Philly. I got them at minus six and a half. Uh, I, you know, Jeff Saturday won his first game, but it was against the Raiders. Who gives a shit about the Raiders? Mm-hmm. Um Philadelphia, they're coming off a loss. They're pretty angry about it because they feel like they got screwed by the refs too, which they may or may not have. Um, so I'm going to go with Philadelphia winning. Actually, you know what? I think I took the first half. I took the first half spread, actually. This was one of my Bryant bets. There you go. And because I was looking at Clark's. Yep, first half minus three and a half I got Philadelphia. Nice. I'm proud of you, my man. Colts, one in nine in first half spreads. But you know when that first that first win was last week. I have Indianapolis covering seven in the whole game. I don't know what it is. I mean, some of it is they have Jonathan Taylor. The the other thing is Eagles. They're still out with uh, Jordan Davis is still out. And he was one of their main run stoppers. Um, I don't know what it is about Jeff Saturday's doing that got them pumped to play uh, the Raiders. But the Colts were in control of that game the whole time. So. I'm just going to ride it. I don't know why. It makes no logical sense because we just watched the best team barely lose one game on Monday Night Football, but short week, you never know. Do you guys think uh, Dallas Goddard being hurt is going to be a big impact? It's going to affect it. It might be so enough. He's, I don't know. he's a good player. He is a good player. I just think they have too many weapons that they can go to when need be. I don't know what the fuck happened Monday night. Like That just looked terrible on the Eagles' part. I think Washington's a good team. I really do. I do too. I, they have a think, very good defense. I think Heineke. I think Heineke is uh, is legit. I think he really is. He just he he reminds me of Case Keenum when he was with the Vikings. He just he makes the play that he needs to. It may not be the best, but he just has a lot of will. That right. Philly had four turnovers. Yeah, that doesn't help either. No. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, I I, I took the. First half because I'm I'm worried about a backdoor. Why I went with the first half on that one? Exactly. I got it. About you two up top as well. So I I, I took Philly covering six and a half. Um, yeah, Indy rallied around their new interim coach Jeff Saturday on you know this past week. Um, I think they come crashing back down to earth. Philly, I think they're pissed off after losing to. Washington, um, and so I like Philly to cover that six and a half. I'm also taking Philly here with the spread. Give me the points. They're coming off of you know just 
being pissed off over everybody. So I think they dominate this game. I don't think Indy is as good as, you know, uh, Jeff Sunday is. So we'll uh, we'll go from there. Just a, an on-purpose insult there. Jeez, Joey. I, You're welcome. I think one thing you guys are all forgetting who the quarterback for the Colts is. It isn't Sam Ellinger anymore. It is former Super Bowl participant Matt Ryan. So Participant. Falcons, baby. MVP. I would have been excited about that. Five on years ago. his name. MVP. Respect. Yeah, you know me. Super Bowl runner up. Yeah. Jesus Christ. We I don't celebrate. Thinking. We don't celebrate silver medals here, Bryant. There we go. Exactly right. So <laughs> just let me know which way we're going to lean. Otherwise, I'm going to be talking about silver medalists all the time. All right. All, <laughs> all right. right. Uh, Clark also took Philadelphia to cover. Next game, Washington oh. minus three at Houston, total of 40 and a half. This one, this is a sucker bet to me. I don't I don't understand this. Um, Chase Young is supposed to be coming back uh, for Washington. Um, I guess, Brian, we'll start with you. Yeah, uh, I mean, we bought. I bought low with the Commanders last week when they covered that 11 and not only one. Um, I think they continue at Houston's dog shit. I, I don't know where this line is. Maybe they think with the uh, – isn't it that uh, they're running backs Pierce, right? Pierce and then Davis Mills. I mean, I know they've got some pieces. I just I don't think Lovey Smith's got it. Has their has uh, their quarterback or wide receiver come back too? The one that was holding out, Cooks. Yeah, there you go. I don't think so. I don't, I'm not sure to be honest. But if you got wide receivers holding out this part of the year, that shows you how dog shit your team is. So mm-hmm. <laughs> and how little they want to be part of the team. Yeah, I took Washington to cover. This was a weird one to me. I think it's I would have taken this one at six to be honest with you. I should buy it up to six. Um but yeah I this was to me top five easiest bet of the week, top two easiest bet of the week. Yeah, I I got it at three and a half, so not quite as good as this line that we have on the screen right now. But I took Washington to cover that. I think Washington's better than people are giving them credit for. Um, I think we said it on Monday's podcast um, that uh, Carson Wentz was just making them worse, I think. Um, I like Heineke. Uh, I mean, he played in almost won a playoff game with them a couple years ago. Um, against the will would be champions at that time too. Yeah, so I I like Washington to cover this here. At Houston's terrible. I don't I don't get this spread. He was the silver medalist in that game to the eventual silver medalist. Yeah. Oh my goodness. No, that was the gold medalist that year. Oh, I thought you said the 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 runner ups. No, no, um, they uh, yeah, Tampa won the Super Bowl that year. Washington Washington Commanders minus six and a half of that alternate line would be plus th- uh, one thirty six. Ten dollars would win you uh, twenty three sixty, including your ten back. So Wait, can you repeat that? Sorry, I, I missed that alternate ten, line. Ten dollars to win twenty three sixty. What's the alternate line? That's minus the alternate six. line. Minus okay. six and a half. Ooh, I will take that all day. <laughs> I think the Washington comes out and goes crazy. What is the uh, over under for Heineke yards? Um, give me one second. Prop bets. That's I also take one. that because I think uh, I think he Heineke he pass that much though. Man, but he looked super fucking good. And McLaurin looked good on Monday. I, I I think he gained some confidence. I'm gonna take Washington on the extended line and the prop bet of Heineke with the over here. Heineke has a – I don't know if this is a real prop bet or if this is just on Action Network, but there's an over-under half a, a rush yard for rushing for him. Take but you got to figure that. sacks and everything uh, yeah, exactly. count that into that. Too. So There's no prop for passing yards. I, I don't I don't see one yet, not on Caesars or on Action yet. Let me look here at I my was, sports book here. Here I was trying to be ballsy, and I would say I would take him, even if it was 400 yards, I'd take the over. I think he's just going to be that fucking good this week against that shitty, shitty fucking Texans team. Over 400, oh. Joey. Uh <clears throat> No more vodka for you tonight. Yeah. <laughs> you make another drink. Right Did now. he just say over 400 for Heineke? Yeah. Holy cow. Um, Clark also took the cover. Can we all agree that no other team should be doing the the chain celebration besides the Vikings? It's acceptable when Heineke does it while drinking a Bush Light can. I did can. appreciate the Bush Light in a garbage can. 
Yes. Garbage can coolers, baby. If this podcast group gets any more fucking Homer, I'm going to just, I don't know what I'm going to do. Jesus Christ. For what? For me saying that, why why are we copying something that's only cool? Because the only reason it's fun is because the guy that started it was the biggest nerd in the NFL. Heineke's uh, actually kind Heineke's actually kind of a cool guy. The Kirk Cousins, University I'm sorry, of Miami is, started the chain. And now you're saying the Vikings are the only team for that the NFL. Do it? That's Holy the shit, turnover really. chain. This is different. Yes, that's the turnover. It's the chain, chain. still. Yeah. I, no comment on that. I, I I could if my actually my comment is I don't give a shit. <laughs> as <laughs> long as my team doesn't start doing the chain, that's all I care about. Yeah, I don't see any 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 uh, props either. That's fine. All right. And also, over 400 yards is hyperbole. I mean, I think he's going to have a great game. It's a I'm going to take I the come under. Come out and have 400, 400 now. Yeah. It could he happen. Does. Of, all, of all teams, it would be against Houston. I hope he does. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I, give me a $5 flyer on 400 over or over 400 for Heineke, and I'll take that all day. <laughs> Let me see here. Passing yards. I'm, I'm just looking up how many Houston averages allowing per game for passing. I bet it's above 300. I bet you a dollar right now. Sure, because no team is averaging over 300. Al- Falcons are the worst at 280. <laughs> of course they are. <laughs> what a slap! Houston's <laughs> allowing 212 <laughs> yards a game. Okay. But they're like middle of the pack, so not too bad, not too good either. All right. All right. NFC East matchup here. The New York Flying Jets at the New England Fighting Patriots. Patriots are three point favorites with a total of 38. No clue what I have. Trent, go ahead. Over 38 and a half on this one. That line was kind of low. Um, I don't know. I, I like these teams to come out and score. Um, I mean, we'll okay. see. New England's been up and down. The Jets have been up and down on scoring this year. Hopefully, they're both up this game. But like I said, 30 and a half. It, it, it was under 40, so I was like, I, I'll take the over on that. I have – I have, I can't remember why I switched this up. I have New England covering three, but my my stat point was Belichick in sub-40 uh, point total games is 60, uh, 76% against the spread. So – oh, just against the spread. So, yeah, I would say uh, Belichick will cover that one. I'm – I'm not too confident in that one going over, dude. I would say the, the Jets have a decent offense. New England typically d- really doesn't. If And if Belichick's going to cover that spread, it's going to be a low-scoring game, ground and pound. <clears throat> yep, I'm taking Jets' money line. I think coming off the bye week that the Jets just go into New England. Oh, wait, it's in, It's at – yeah, it's at New England. Yeah, it's in uh, Jets go to New England and just beat the shit out of them. Jets, so, money, cl- Jets' money line, by the way, is plus 143. Nice. So Clark took the over with Trent. I am going with the Jets to cover. I, I don't know why there's disrespect to the Jets. They are pretty legit this year. I They really are. Their defense is top notch. They're I think they're a top five defense. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna go with the go with the Jets here. I, I think honestly, the sad thing is, I think one of their speaking of their draft was you know Sauce Gardner is their top rookie that's shutting everyone down. Patriots ain't got a top target to shut down. Who are they going right. to shut down? You know, yeah. regular team's number three wide receiver. I mean, Belichick will find a way. If there's someone that's going to be smart enough to figure out how to beat th- this Jets team and that beats this every Jets team, it's going to be Bill Belichick. It's not that I don't think Belichick ha- – I think Belichick has the mind. I just don't think he has the players. Is, is Mac Jones starting again? I believe, I believe so. so yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I don't have faith in Mac Jones. I just don't. It's here. probably a good week to pound Ramondre Stevenson in fantasy. <clears throat> What's our next? Sorry, I'm just trying to see if there's any props on Mac Jones. Not that I see. Go ahead. They may not. They might not be really. It might be too early for it. Mm-hmm. Detroit at New York Giants. Um, if someone wants to go, go ahead. I forgot what I have. This one was tough. I went with over 45 points. Uh, I mean, the the biggest thing that I, I am thinking in this one, because the Giants, oddly enough, are 1-7 in the over-unders against this year, only one over. Um, 
one, you're playing one of the worst defenses in the league in the, in the Lions. The Lions have actually been forced to scoring some points, which I think is going to force the Giants to come off. Plus, the Giants are coming off of a bye week. Um, or they are, I'm sorry, they're, they're just well-rested. So, I wouldn't say I'm I'm going with the over. I, I'll i be honest, man. I I was really leaning towards that giant spread, though. That If I had to choose something else, it would be that. I, I went with Bryant on this one as well. I got it at 44 and a half. Uh, so I took the over. Uh, same reasoning. Uh, Detroit's been putting up some points. So New York's going to have to hang with them and score points with them to win. So I, I took the over. I am taking the Giants with the points. Um, I think that they're just a better team. And at some point, Detroit has to, like, stop being close at some point i would think so yeah i'll take the uh, so clark took the giant spread i believe too um this was one of my bryant bets this was me i took the lions team total of 20 and a half in the game yeah solid. took the over yes sorry took the over 20 and a half points team total for the lions yeah i like that what let me uh if you give me one second, I'm, I want to pull up their totals the last few weeks here. There I mean, was one about- game they had 15, and then the rest of them were like 30, 40, 30, stuff like yep. that. 30, 30 at Chicago. That was actually Dan Campbell's first road win as, as a head coach. Um, 15 versus Green Bay, 27 losing to Miami, 6 losing to Dallas, 0 losing to the Patriots. I only have the top or the last five games in front of me. But I, I like that 20 and a half, dude. I, I mean, they've the had Lions how many games scored pretty consistently? Yeah, I mean, they had a top offense there for a while. I don't know what they're ranked now for points per game. Actually, I could probably find that. Oh, uh, there. If I'm pulling this up, offense. So, points per game, they are, they're still top 10 for points per game. Yeah. So nope, I, I like that. Nice. I, I think there's gonna be a lot just a lot more offense than you would expect in a Giants game. Yeah. All right, Carolina, Baltimore, Baltimore, 13 point favorites with a total of 42. Oh, I cool. went with Carolina covering. That is just a shit ton of points. Um Carolina can be terrible or they can be somewhat decent. I I don't I just don't trust Baltimore. I think every time I bet the Baltimore spread, I lose. But Baltimore will win, but that is a lot of points. I also don't trust Baltimore, and I think that uh, both teams are not very good uh, offensively. So I took the under on this one. Ooh, solid. Clark I took win. the over. He's going against you. Me and oh. Clark. Suck it, Trent me and Clark. Me and Clark O'Chains were taking the over here. That's Carl Chains to you. Fucking Carl. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you guys might not trust the uh, our, um You might not, guys might not trust Baltimore. You know who I don't trust even more than than them. In Carolina. I don't trust Baker Mayfield. PJ Walker was the best thing that happened to this team, and now he's out for this game. Is uh, Baker starting. Me, yeah, Baker Mayfield starting. Oh, what happened to Walker? What's that? What happened? <laughs> they're not paying him as much money as they're paying Baker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, He's, I, all I know is I looked at injury report, PJ Walker out. I am, I was, again, I tried to be a little more nuanced and do a little research. My research ended when I looked at the injury report and said, PJ Walker out. That ended any shot of, of the Carolina covering, in my opinion. Baker stinks as a pro. He has a Heisman, good for him. But um, Baltimore is going to cover this game 13 points. But like I was going to say, it took a hurricane for the Panthers to even be relevant with PJ Walker. Um, I, I just. I don't trust him, man. Baltimore. Why are they trying Darnold? I know Darnold's not great, but he's still something. I don't know. Maybe they prefer to just have that big old Lego head on the sideline. I, I really have no clue. <laughs> you, ever, you ever look at that guy's head? There's, there's a few guys you look at and it's just that, that big s- cylinder fucking block head. Him, Zion, Williamson. Um, Jesus. Uh, Hunter for our team this year. I mean, there, there's a few people you just look at block. Oh, my God. Jeez. That's awesome. 
Uh, Chicago at Atlanta. Atlanta, three-point favorites with a total of 49-and-a-half. I really wanted to take the over on this game, but I do not trust Atlanta to score points. So I'm doing another Bryant bet. The over for Chicago of 23-and-a-half points. Nice. Solid. After these last – once they got rid of their defensive players, I don't, again, I don't know where they just decided to let – if they just go, okay, now that we our defense is going to – we're getting rid of our big pieces, let it rip. I don't get that. Um, hold on. I, Joe, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. I just want you to hear this because I'm all in on Ohio State quarterbacks being very good in the league. So I got Chicago covering three versus the Atlanta Falcons. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Look at that guy. <laughs> I just want to make sure you heard that all right. Apologize, listeners, if that was too loud. I uh, am going for the over. I don't think either defense stops anybody. And, uh, yeah, Mariota versus Justin Fields. Who'd have thunk it? Ohio State versus Oregon. Crazy. Right? Quack, yeah. quack. Yeah, I went with Brian here. I got Chicago covering the three. Um. I didn't know with this game. I think it'll be close. Chicago has been scoring a lot of points, but I just didn't trust them to win. Yeah. So uh, Clark took the Chicago money line. He trusts Chicago to win. All right. He feels good about it. He says, suck it, Joey. Chicago's winning this. Clark's taking that value. <laughs> I think our picks are starting to become more cynical against each other. We're just a, just, just a Joey. Player. Just Joey. I've got nothing. It, it's, a, it's a wonder that we're winning any of these bets now at this point. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're not looking at the numbers. We're looking at the hate in our heart and it doesn't bode well. Yeah. Did you notice I'm talking crap to Joey about Clark with Clark's pick, not my yeah. own. Yeah. <laughs> That's all right. Suck it, Clark. Carl, what is Ooh. he doing off screen over there? I'm making a you drink. Don't know. You gotta have a kit right in front of him. All right, next game. I feel I feel good about these uh, team totals. I I haven't done that yet this year. These are new bets for me, but I feel good about the the overs on those. Oh. Las Vegas at Denver. Denver two and a oh. half point favorites with a total of forty one and a half. This is the this is the. <laughs> This one's straight up. I can't, I can't. I can't take this guy seriously. <laughs> oh, this, this is the suck bowl of the week. Yeah, this is this is the official Big Ten game of the week for me because I hate both these teams. They're awful. <laughs> no, um, no, but but seriously, I did go with the under. Um, my note was I'm, you know, instead of I'm feeling dangerous, you know, that's his nickname. I'm feeling danger under in this game. But both teams <laughs> stink out loud. Um, right now for the year, just an interesting fact, I brought it up a few weeks ago on the road to 272. Um, Russell Wilson has seven touchdowns on the year passing. His house that he owns has 12 bathrooms, so he has yet to pass his house bathroom with touchdown ratio right now. He needs five more this year. We'll, we'll check in on that next week to see if we've... We'll just, you know what, because I know they're not going to throw any touchdowns. Let's just check on it in about three weeks. All right? We should put that on the scroll or on the ticker on the bottom. We got some ideas for this ticker for all our our, our uh, listeners that tune in on YouTube Live. So. Yep. Clark uh, Clark took the over on this one. I was kind of shocked by that. I took Denver minus two and a half because while Denver looks terrible, Vegas just looks dysfunctional at this point. I I took the same thing, Ryan, and for the same reason. And I saw today that Vegas apparently doesn't have enough cash to get rid of Daniels. So they're like stuck with him for two seasons now because they can't pay it, pay his contract off and hire another coach. Yep. What, How does what that happen? You go to you go to the city with more money than than anything and have this new stadium. I, how do you not have cash with this team? You're an NFL owner like the most lucrative business right now, basically. How do you not have cash? Are you asking how people in Vegas go in with a lot of money and then come out <laughs> and get broke? Damn I think it, we know it. what happened here. <laughs> not fuck, not out. What's his name? Mark Davis? Mark Davis mm-hmm. spent too much time at P.F. Chang's and, and uh, the MGM. Lost spending all his money on the crap table. Spending all his time at the Bull Cut Emporium. Yeah, yep. spending all his money on haircuts. <laughs> 
only he went to sports clips, he might learn something. <laughs> I uh, don't care about this game. I took the under. It's terrible. <laughs> it's uh, a terrible game. Uh, one cool, fun stat I learned today listening to podcasts is Russell Wilson went from the number five quarterback in 2019 or 2020 to the number 16 quarterback last year to the number 33 quarterback based on QBR. So isn't it Russell funny? Wilson sucks. Isn't it funny that we all thought it was because of Pete Carroll and Seattle that Russell Wilson was struggling, and it turns out that he – is kind of the cancer to that team. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it kind of looks like Trevor yes. a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> How the hell does that look like me? Same hairline. <laughs> I, I, again, I have zero hair. I think this has been brought up five times just tonight. I, love, I can't see you. You're behind the logo, so I can't Good. see you. I love the fact <laughs> that he's just got this awesome haircut and mullet type thing. And then just no facial hair. Like, you know what? I want to be clean cut, guys. I want to look clean here. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's Ooh. it's great. There we go. How do you like that? Official new breaking news at the bottom there are our uh, road to two seventy two standings. Oh, would you like hey, that? there you we go. Got, we got, we got ticker going. That. What happened to my ticker that I put on there? It'll come back. I am so yeah, thankful yeah. that we that we spent money on Restream Pro to be able to do this stuff. I just want a soundboard. I just want a fucking soundboard, man. What make it like bling? Like make those sound effects mm-hmm. and stuff. <laughs> Remember how fun that podcast was? That was I that actually sure the, was probably one of our drunkest ones too. So yeah. I feel like the video quality of that one wasn't quite as good too. No. no. All right, next game. Let's get out of this crap game. Um, Dallas at Minnesota. Dallas going into Minnesota after losing to the Packers as one-and-a-half-point favorites with a total of 47-and-a-half. Trent, take it away. I do not understand this. This is the worst line of the week. Um, I have it's a frankly Packer. insulting. Yeah, I have a um, – delusional Dallas fan uh, that is at work and mentioned this to him. He's like, well, it's because it's America's team. I'm like, I, I don't think that's how Vegas makes these lines. Like, I really And they don't. were America's team like 15 years ago. Yeah. I was like, I don't think that's how Vegas makes ago. these lines here. Uh, yeah. You just lost to the Packers. They're uh, just a raging dumpster fire right now. The Cowboys were like 170 something and O while leading by at least 14 going into the fourth quarter until this past Sunday. And they're going to be favorites in Minnesota. It isn't even in Dallas. I don't get it. I took the value here. Take money line, Minnesota. I, you're, this- you're, you're going into a team that's eight and one, just beat the, like I said, Super Bowl favorites. Um, at their home, they haven't played a home game in this is what in three weeks now. You're gonna have one of the hardest places to play in this season. Like you, you, going to Minnesota is going to be a bitch for teams this year, and you think Dallas should be favored in Minnesota? That is just stupid. I, Minnesota might lay an egg. They they might have a hangover from this last week. I don't know, but just going off of records, Minnesota being at home. Um, it's it is quite frankly insulting to Minnesota, even at, I guess being a homer, Joey would say that. But yeah, Minnesota money line easy. Dude, I think Vegas, like what 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 do we want to do on this line? Like, how big of favorites should we make the Vikings? And it's like call uh skip Bayless. <laughs> he's like favorite Dallas one and a half. <laughs> Dak Prescott is the new Joe Namath. Mm-hmm. But, I don't get it. Like, like I said, they could lay an egg. They could be uh, the hangover, emotional hangover from this last week. I don't, nope. I don't know. Hopefully, KOC doesn't, you know, doesn't allow that to happen. You, I just you don't, can't don't talk get. all that shit and then say we might lose. You have to stick to your. Guns I don't think. Here. No, I don't think we will. I think it's super insulting. I'm saying something that could happen. It's, it's possible it could happen. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, it, ha it happened when after the Minneapolis miracle, Minneapolis has a walk off touchdown, and then the last, the next week, they lay an egg in the NFC Championship. Shit happens. Mm -hmm. But as of now, Minnesota has proven to be the better team, and you're at home in Minnesota. Like, this is stupid. Joey? Joey's doing some housekeeping. Yeah, sorry. I'm super dusty from working in the shop this week. Uh, so I went to Twin Peaks earlier and saw a lot of great ass there. It was awesome. Uh, I wasn't there. This, Isn't your uh, girlfriend sorry. there? Or what's, what's the deal with your girlfriend? Is she okay with you saying that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. She knows I was there. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I'm a grown internal, ass man. I don't need to some, check. Sometimes people. things are internal dialogues, Joey. <laughs> <laughs> nope. She was a okay with me telling her all this. So, anyway. All right, all right, all uh, right. So, I was making a joke about how this is not a great ass of a bet for or line because this is terrible. Uh, Minnesota should win this handedly. But I'm going to take the over just because I think both teams score points. So there's that. I like it. Minnesota might cover that on their own. Yeah. What, Man, I what, had a really good joke there and just got ruined. So good. <laughs> put, put it up. What Clark have? He uh, had Minnesota money line. Nice. Well, I'll be the villain here. Dallas, minus one and a half. There's a reason they're favorites. It's because they're not relying on luck every fucking week. Uh, every one possession game, your luck's going to run out. It's this week versus Dallas. Also, I'm doing this so I can catch a game up on Trent. I'm not going to catch up games by picking the right pick. I have to go against Trent eventually. And Clark, I just saw I'm down one to him. Did you know so, that you're not going to catch up with me by picking the wrong thing? I, it, you know what? Every, that's where you have to double down on something. I'm either going – I either go with you at the same pace or I double down on something. I either catch up or I just I slip behind. That's fine. But I would say, like I said, I'm. it's driving me crazy not being in first. So you got to take irrational decisions. And right now, what's a more rational time than – a Vikings with a very emotional win and Dallas coming off a very regrettable and loss that should make them bitter against another NFC, um, NFC North opponent. I think this gets them dialed in. Correct. What's, what's going to happen? Mike McCarthy's going to smash touchdowns. some watermelons or what? Is that going to get them going? Possibly. You, you never know. Mike this, McCarthy was pretty good at beating the Vikings on with the Packers. So I don't know. Maybe he's got something. Mike McCarthy, the Packers were were at one point able to beat anybody, not just the Vikings. Yeah, I know. This is this is where I have to laugh because if any one of us goes against the Chiefs, we're the worst people ever. But yeah. every single week, Brian's like the <laughs> the Vi the Vikings aren't that good. Fuck the Vikings. I'm going against them. I've never said fuck. But also, the, here's the other, here's the other thing you got to remember. It's uh the game's at three thirty. We're creeping a little closer to prime time here. That's hopefully, yeah. hopefully the lead is so but. much. That yes. When we get into prime time, there's not enough time for them to get Vikings come back. have to get that early lead, so eventually, yeah, the closer the nightfall comes. <laughs> I don't know. It's winter time. It's starting to get a little darker soon. Kirk might be oh, getting his jammies and the little PJ stuff. Remember, he, he, he just tired, played. A, he just played a one o'clock game in Buffalo. So, well, that's what I'm saying. This is later. It's closer to prime time. Only an right? hour. Two. I don't know. I, like I said, two? I've made my two? pick. Oh, that's two. that's right. That's two thirty my time. That's right. I, I, I've stated. Ryan. I've stated my reasons. Ryan, to your point about the Chiefs, kudos. Good. For oh you. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just yeah, be he'll, careful. He'll, just be he'll, careful. He'll just, yeah. Say anything about the Chiefs, and it's you're you're learning. You're learning. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> All right. Next game. Uh, Cincinnati at Pittsburgh. Uh, Cincinnati favored at at four point favorites with a total of forty one. I took Cincinnati because Pittsburgh just sucks. I, I hate Pittsburgh. That's all it is. They just won, but I just hate Pittsburgh. So that's me. I'm taking I... the bank, or wait, I'm taking the Steelers with four points. Uh, I don't think the Bengals are very good. I think last year was kind of a fluke for them. So, yeah, I'm going to go Pittsburgh plus four. Hold on. Are we talking bad about Joe Burrow? We mm -hmm. all love Joe Burrow on this pod. We don't talk bad about him. Mm -hmm. I, have, I have Pittsburgh, uh, I have Pittsburgh uh, plus four as well. I, I think it was kind of a fluky year. I still think they're good, but you got to remember, they're getting TJ Watt back for the Steelers, and the Bengals still don't have Jamar Chase, and that was his security blanket. So I think that just adds to Mike Tomlin will get him ready. Cincinnati is going to have the all white jerseys again, though, so it's uh -oh. fine. 
Uh, anyway, Jersey Juju is is something. Out, it, it is a real predicament. Iowa State was doing gangbusters in their black jerseys a few years ago. You get that right alternate jersey and you wear it at the right times. That that goes quite a ways. Just don't wear black jerseys because nobody else should do that besides Iowa. Yep. Yep. As permission. You need to ask for permission. They Iowa invented, and Atlanta. They invented black. <laughs> I took and the over in this. Hates that. I took uh, I, 40 and a half uh, over. It's going to happen. Lots of points. Thank you, David. I think it's David says, I think it's more than luck with the Vikings. Luck is involved, but there's something else involved. Yeah. Skill. That's what the Vikings have. You don't get to eight and one just off of luck. It's the NFL, man. Mm. Yep. I don't know. On that fourth and eighteen catch and fumbling on the one to recover for a touchdown, I, I think that uh, I would say Skill, there is some Bryant. luck in there. Skill. It, it was it was a uh, karma for the refs allowing 12, 12 men on the field and not calling it. Yep. Destiny. Joey, I apologize for all the times I, I brought up the refs with Iowa State. Okay, so we have real, like, real concern, like an actual thing happened, and you don't like that something actually. Happened. Oh no, I would say that that one, like the, the most egregious. Again, like we like we talked on Monday, it was a reviewable play that they didn't review. Twelve men yeah. on the field on a fourth, like on a uh, fourth down, first and or a fourth and goal on the one. I mean, yeah, well, both if there's of them. ever a time you're going to review both that in the last. Was that within two minutes of oh, the two minute warning? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It yeah, was like minutes, forty like seconds. Yeah. Well, both of them. Uh, the the catch that wasn't a catch. Why wasn't that reviewed too? I Again, inside know. two minutes. I didn't so that, that has problem. to be. Yeah, and like that I said, has to be reviewed the, as well by the booth. Not two two weeks in the row. The NFL has sent out letters to the Vikings apologizing for missing bad calls. So they are the Iowa State of the NFL. They just have a yeah. wall with just the apology letters <laughs> framed. <laughs> so yeah, we have complaints for a reason. Uh, the best was I sent the video to Trent. I didn't send it to you guys. Was uh, Coach KOC was going over film with uh, on, yeah. for the Vikings Network, and he's just like, Ooh. yeah. What was it? something along the lines of yeah like, we didn't uh, we didn't get it score. into the, yeah it's hard we to score in the goal line against twelve men but we'll work on that yeah we're I got to work on a <laughs> game plan for that but that's something in the progress at the moment <laughs> see this is why I this is why I love uh, like UFC and uh, college wrestling because if you go to the scorecards or go to the score like. You, you just get shit on you and the refs always suck. So like, don't leave it to the refs, just end the fight. Just pin yeah. them. So no, they, just gotta figure something, they just got to figure something out where the refs just aren't freaking terrible. Like I don't, I, it seems like every year we talk about it, but it seems like every year it gets worse. And we saw it on the Monday night game with Washington and Philadelphia too. Like it's not, I'm not saying it's just a Vikings thing. It's almost every game. There's an issue where the refs just completely blow something. Nope, I get yeah. that. I would say I the, the most egregious, but I thought it was kind of funny because again, he he's playing the way that if you were trying to win, was Heineke getting the roughing the passer and, and really whipping his head back and immediately yeah. cheering. I was like, Yeah, it's Bush League, but this is also the NFL and you gotta get a win somehow. So wins yep. a win's a win, yep. doesn't matter. You know, I, going back to that, you know, they said uh, you know, Twitter blew up during that and like it's uh, it was so soft of a call, you can't end a game like that. Like the, the dude took a knee. You can't yeah. freaking hit him. It yeah. was the rules. And it's, it's not the rules. The first guy, exactly. And the first guy already had him down anyway. Yeah, yeah, and it's not like he took a knee, gave himself up, and then he got hit. He took a knee, gave himself up, and was standing back up by the time the guy hit him. Yeah. Like, I, Let, Let's remember, we're watching the NFL where how many times a week and in college football where a grown man hurdles another six-foot-tall man and you're telling me he couldn't jump over a guy that was that was sliding or down. Yeah. I mean, that's I mean, I could jump over Taylor Heineke at that point. And I don't got a lot, a lot much of vert. <laughs> yeah. yeah, David makes a good point. You can't use bad language like uh like the Chiefs guy did. And again, that's yeah. one of those where you guys lost a game because of that shit. Mm -hmm. Well, it, much, much more than that, but it doesn't help when it's on the final drive it just seems like when it, especially in the nfl when the, those guys get momentum it doesn't matter how shitty of a team it is they, they realize when they got an opportunity and it 
seems to always pan out, especially in an offensive friendly rule book and league. Yeah. Like, like, like Brian said, like there was much more to that game, Mm -hmm. but that was in such a terrible time to throw that flag. There's no time on the backside to make up for it. It was the, if that were in the the first quarter, if that were in the first quarter, you'd forget about it. You would by now that flag never happened, you know? Yeah. Yep. Agreed. Yeah, it's it's just dumb. Um, and I and I said it the other day to you guys on the messages where it almost seems like there's a script that the NFL refs have to try to keep throughout the season and impact the game. Luckily, the Vikings have been able to get past that script and win. Sure. Little little conspiracy theorist in me, I guess. Yeah, there, Which is there are legitimately people that believe every year is scripted. Like we already know that five years from now, who the Super Bowl champion is going to be. It's okay. Yeah. Sounds good. You know. Yeah, that's a little. I they, yeah. the NFL must really hate Minnesota and Cleveland and Buffalo and. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, because people can't go there to party during the Super Bowl. So of course they hate them. They, they you got to think where the money goes school. and the money flows. I mean, Brian's Brian's good at this. He yeah. he hates the Big Ten because of money shit. So mm-hmm. let's just go on. Well, with that, I mean, Brian. they were paying players have one team. before it was legal. So the Big Ten has like one team, Ohio State. Like Jesus Christ. <laughs> no, now come on, that's unfair. They also have Michigan. And they True. have a very long coattail that everyone else rides along. Pull us along, Ohio State. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we, same could be the, uh, said the same for Oklahoma. So. Yeah, for the Big 12. Oklahoma and right. Texas for the longest time. And yeah. that's the thing that pissed us off is, is they were wanting the larger share, and then they were shitting the bed in prime time. It was like, if, you're, if we're going to ride the coattails and you get a larger revenue share, you got to win some playoff games and not get shit on by like 40 points to LSU. Or, or declare your back after a nine-win season, Texas. If we're going to ride these coattails, just go to the SEC and be on the floor mat. That's fine. We'll be the new Big 12, and, and we can create our own two coattails, you know? And you won't have any coattails because no one's going to make the playoffs. Yeah, well, you never know. <laughs> Without yeah, that 12-team playoff. <laughs> yeah. if, if you want to do our, our math like we were talking earlier in there, with the Big 12 and new Big 12, we have five ranked teams right now. So. Hmm. All right. UCF, Cincinnati. We'll I'm do it kidding. in the college football. Yeah, podcast. we'll do it tomorrow. That'll be we tomorrow. Were there any of you tune in? Were there were there any of you guys that were cheering for Texas to be Alabama? No, horns down, baby. <laughs> yeah, horns down. It would have. Yeah, it's horns down unless Texas won. Then that's a Big Twelve strength. That's right. That's the way my mind thinks. <laughs> no, <laughs> fuck that. No, <laughs> that's the only reason I was I was asking that because it's like, do you yeah. put? Do you put your love for the Big 12 above your hatred for te- for Texas? Dude, Texas has been a shithead, and they've destroyed the Big 12. Absolutely. To be honest, absolutely not. I was a, That was the one time where it's like, I mean, it, it's – I I was going to make a terrible analogy. I'm not. It just – I'm not going to cheer <laughs> for the bad guy. You know? So, weird. as far as a Big 10 football fan, uh, the only Big 10 allegiances that I even care about are during wrestling season. I want other Big 10 teams to, like, win the Southern Scuffle – and shit yeah. like that, I and beat Oklahoma State because I fucking hate Oklahoma State in wrestling. I don't give a shit about them at the wall. They're they're just there. But yeah. Uh, yeah, I just I don't cheer for Big Ten football teams during bowl season. Like a lot of people just go through just pick the Big Ten teams. I don't cheer for them. I don't care about them. They're just they we played them. Oh. That's fine. We want to get into allegiances to political parties tonight. There we go. <laughs> no, but uh, but if they do win, that's where you just talk about like, yeah, Purdue did beat Tennessee last year, all because of the strength of the Big Ten. You know, how no, the only reason I even give a shit about the Big Ten beating anyone else is to argue with you, yeah, because exactly. you're the only, <laughs> yeah. So we can do Big Ten versus Big Twelve. That's the only time I give a shit about it. Absolutely. Can Games we all agree? Can we just all agree, change the subject here, and all agree that partying with the Bills Mafia would be a blast? Oh, fuck yeah. Yes. Let me have that as the first assignment for In the Zone. There you go. We right, Dylan. should have a Pulse of the Heartland meetup at a Bills tailgate. Yep. Be so fun. You can, yeah. We that can do it at the fun. AFC Championship this year when the Chiefs are hosting them. How about that? Hmm. I don't have I the strength to jump through a table, so one of you guys has to do that. But 
I think yeah, I'm, I'm bringing the through through one. Table. I'm bringing the flimsiest table I can find. <laughs> can some? Can I throw someone through a table? WWE style, right? Yeah. That'd be awesome. Yes. All right. We don't want those Super Bowl passes anymore. We want a Bills Mafia tailgate. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, that's not true. All right, I guess let's get back on track here. Kansas City at L.A. Chargers, total of 50 points. Homer Bryant, take it. Um, I got Chargers covering five and a half here. I just think with the injuries to Miko um, and Juju. Yeah, hear me out. I got I got injuries to the top two receiving uh, threats by the Chiefs. Herbert and company are starting to get healthier with Mike Williams. I think Keenan Allen is, is back as well. Um, plus, it's a revenge game at home. Um, again, everyone's kind of written off the Chargers because they lost to the Jacksonville Week Two, or uh, whenever it was when Herbert was out. I mean, they're only five and th- three right now. I mean, they're pretty close to the Chiefs just record-wise. Um, I still think the Chiefs can win. I think it's just going to be another tight one. The Chargers, oh, they they have every team in the AFC West has built their team to beat the Chiefs, and kind of the same thing I've talked about with like the Raiders. The Raiders are dog shit. But they played the Chiefs so well. Why? Because when they're specifically playing the Chiefs, they're going to take those chances on fourth down. They're going to play way more aggressive. And that's where we kind of falter is, is you can't stop every fourth down every single time with all those weapons. So, I, I mean, I think the Chargers are going to cover five and a half. I think the Chiefs still win a close one. Clark is Clark is with you. He took the Chargers to cover too. Mm-hmm. I went the opposite. I I got more faith in the Chiefs than the Chiefs homers here. Uh, I got the Chiefs covering this five and a half. I do too. And every time I go against the Chiefs homers, I always lose. But they're wrong this week. Kansas City is going to beat the Chargers. The chart you say, me Colt Hardman. And the Chargers have no wide receivers. They have mm-hmm. no one to throw to. They have a running back. That's great. Yeah, that running back's been fucking lights out though. I'm pretty sure Mike Williams and Keenan Allen are back this week. Keep going. I'm I'm gonna double check that though. Yeah, stab, uh, stab that. So it's my turn. Sorry, I'm laughing at Dave. Say, are you uh, okay, there, Joey? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing at Dave. 16 years ago, in an ISU chuggler at Brady's basement, with Dave being chanted, I think I'd be going through a table at a Bills game. Yeah, Dave. And then we'd have to pull you out of the bathroom with Bart Black because it's the only person you would listen to. Oh, my God. Such fucking memories. But I'm going to go. I like the Chiefs in this one. I like them more than uh, spread. But I also think there's going to be a ton of points. So I think more points than the Chiefs winning. So I'm going to go the over in this game. Over 50? So, I mean, that'd be 27-24. I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I I wouldn't doubt if both teams are in the 30s, to be honest with you. Yeah. You know, I, I liked it when I saw that these two teams are playing. I looked at the over under two. But when that number starts with a five, it scares mm-hmm. me. It, it does for most games, but not yeah. Chargers Chiefs. No, I, like, I, I totally get it on this game. Yeah. yeah. Now I say that and it's probably going to be like 25 points total. It'll probably be like 14, 11 or some shit. <laughs> so long as the Chiefs win by five them. and a half. I see both of them were limited at practice today. Both both on the Chargers or Chiefs? <coughs> the Chargers, yeah. Williams and uh, Allen were both limited. Mm. Yeah, I would say they're, they're both showing questionable, but again, if you get the, either of those two at 80% or both of them, they're pretty fucking solid. I mean, they're, they're in the – not the top, but they're probably one of the top duos in the NFL if they're mostly healthy. So, And the final game of the week, Monday Night Football. Oh, yeah, this is at Mexico City, I believe Clark said. I didn't realize that. It yep. doesn't change any of my bets, but whatever. Uh, San Francisco's eight-point favorites against Arizona with a total of 43-and-a-half. Um, second biggest Kyler Murray fan I know after me, Brian, go ahead. <laughs> well, I, I think um, I would say uh, I was thinking about this earlier comparing I think my hatred for Joe Burrow is you you have equal hatred for Kyler Murray it's a it's no a player I don't think I don't think I can reach your hatred level I, I, I don't really know don't. Man. I, I think I think it's up there it's shockingly I I say a lot of my Joe shit for a for a fact and, and it's I, we always hear Kyler in the war zone shit but Speaking of Warzone, that got released today. 
So I think that Kyler is going to get war zoned out in the in the next couple days. He's going to be uh, focused up. And right now, especially with the Niners, I mean, I'm not too impressed with the Niners, even with their their new addition <laughs> to the offense. I have uh, Arizona covering eight points on this one. Um, give me one second. I have stats. I'm getting pulled up right now. I mean, San Fran right now, even with CMC on the team, they're only one and two against the spread. Um, and then just as well, Arizona has covered three of the last four versus this team. I I don't know if Arizona wins, but I mean, that that eight points is a lot, especially for an offense in the Niners that hasn't proved that it can put up a lot of points. I don't know if Kyler is playing this week, though. I, I see he's still day to day. He might be missing another week, which to Cole me, McCoy honestly, still. honestly, that to me makes Arizona better, but that's just me. Yep, I took Arizona covering eight yeah. and a half on this. Uh, it's in Mexico City. That's something to be noted as well on Monday night. So, he, yep, he's still question, but I mean, hell, Colt, Colt, uh, Colt McCoy, who is a who is one that got injured that was playing as well, or was that Colt that got injured? Colt got he's dealing with a knee injury. And who was the backup to him last week? I have no idea who the third string quarterback is for the Arizona Cardinals. Oh come on, you you call you not on my radar. radar. Not on your Who's radar. Who's their punter? <laughs> Trey Lance. Um, uh, Clark. Yeah. Clark took the under forty three. Do you think the um, NFL record field goal could be kicked in this game? Distance. Yes. Because you know they always say Denver, the air is thinner, the ball travels farther. I was looking up Mexico City today. It's elevation is like 2,000 feet more than Denver. It's yep. like 7,300 feet. Yep. I don't think – if, if if Justin Tucker were playing, yes. But I don't know. Not with these yeah, two I mean, games. Actually, you don't think Robbie thing, Gold can do it? Is Robbie Gold still with the – <laughs> I don't know. He's just a random kicker, uh, 49ers <laughs> kicker I could think of. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jimmy Gerber. I'd say because with the Cardinals, Matt Prater's been out for a while, so for sure with the with the kicking question, he's not going to be the one. I'm trying to find. Give me a second. I, I'll yeah, have it. Robbie in. Gold. Robbie Gold's with the Niners. It, it is him. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, Ro- Joey, Robbie did you Gold. make your pick? I have not yet. Uh, are we done with the kicking conversation? I, I'm fine with talking about elevation because that goes into what I'm going to talk about. So yeah, do it. So, last time I watched a sporting event <clears throat> that was held in Mexico City, Cain Velasquez lost his UFC heavyweight championship belt to uh, Bigfoot Silva, and it was a terrible fucking match. Cain went out there, rocked him, and then just gassed. That elevation is different. Like, it's not, it's not Denver different. It's different. Mm-hmm. So... I'm going to go with the under in this. And I think both teams get gassed in the first half, and there isn't shit that happens after that. Sure. Uh, at, being a being a guy that's over three bills, those linemen are going to be sucking all the oxygen possible. That, that's for sure. So, Joe, right. does that does the elevation, does it have that dog in it? It does. It's, it's undefeated. It has all the dogs in it. Yes. The elevation is undefeated. Yes. Well, this is my teaser of the week, fellas. We need to have like fancy music and a fancy graphic coming up saying teaser. Bum, 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 bum. There we go. What is it? We are we are going with Arizona plus fourteen with an under of forty nine and a half for minus one twenty. How are you getting those lines at? Oh, because they're both at minus so... eight plus six. Minus eight is plus six, so plus plus fourteen, or excuse me, plus eight with a six point difference, so plus fourteen. Yeah. And then a six point spread difference or a six point total difference too. To so forty nine and yeah. a half. Yeah. Oh my lord! I take it. <clears throat> I don't. I don't see how either of those misses. To be honest. Plus fourteen under forty nine and a half. That's the teaser of the week. Brought to you by In the Zone Media. We're in the zone. <laughs> Giving all the best minus one twenty bets. Wait, are, are we making are we making the, the the tagline now? We're in the zone. <laughs> We're in the zone. I don't know, but the whiskey's made it sound good. So hey, I don't know. I think we just make it a thing. That's what uh, we do. I'll tell 
I'll tell Dylan to make sure to listen to at least the last five minutes of this, and he'll be like, oh, my God, you guys are not part of this anymore. Yeah, you're done. You're out. <laughs> you lost Nick another again. one. Shit. Uh, what's the line on over under one snap for Brock Purdy? Oh, that'd be a prop I'd like to play. That's right. Over. I mean, I mean, uh, <laughs> Hypothetically, Every, it's probably like plus 300, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah probably. <laughs> Every week, we just need to start doing promos and just just stupid shit. I mean... It's I, in the zone instead of uh, EA Sports, it's in the game. Here's Trent's, Pulse, it's yeah. in the zone. <laughs> here's Trent's beard trimming tip of the week, brought to you by his used iPhone. Brought to you by <laughs> Skull Shaver. <laughs> I only nick my head twice with it. Uh, no, skull shaver, you can't do it. That's what I use. What's the one that you nicked your head on with? We need uh, to add some. <laughs> Harry, Harry. Harry's razors. You'll Harry's cut the shit out of your head. That's their tagline. I'm just so sitting it, here. It, it literally I'm... says on their box, not used for a head shaving or something like that. I'm just sitting here <laughs> watching Joey, and Joey's like, well, you guys just shut up now. Come on. <laughs> I have no idea what you were talking about the last five minutes. So. <laughs> well, we're in the zone, Joey. So get Joey, Joey's zone. like, we're st- we're still live. <laughs> I'm way more in the zone than you can be. Heartland Pulse. Uh, we're right, in the well, zone. Well, that was uh, all the games this week. Um, good times. Good times were had. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna tell you right now. So start watching the, those rankings right now. I'm in the middle of the pack with some of my bold predictions. Trent, your 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 lead's gonna start slipping a little bit. That's all. I'm gonna say, say good good luck to you losers <laughs> this week <laughs> catching me. I I'd like uh, to argue with the man, but he's been in first like the month last month and a half. So I I don't know what to say. Probably the <laughs> first eleven weeks of the season. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh. Um, make sure everyone tunes in to the college football podcast slash YouTube live extravaganza tomorrow night, Thursday night, um, hosted by Bryant, joined by Yosef, Trent, and Clark is somewhere with us in our spirit. He'll be on his a lighter. Are you lighting <laughs> us on fire? <laughs> That's my the maestro here. Oh, Ryan's okay. gonna light up a cigar. Mm-hmm. Stogie's got asthma. inside. You got asthma. I have to stick to the liquid stuff. Stogie's inside. The good Deadwood Tobacco Company cigar will be good for you, Ryan. I will. Uh, they're moving the that. Soon. They're moving. Yeah. That, so yeah, it's supposed to open in January. We should go. <clears throat> so the oyster bar is completely different now. Not yeah. anything like it was before. Um, and then I think they, yeah, they moved the. The cigar place, someplace too. Yeah, Deadwood like renovated a place, and it's way bigger <laughs> now, I guess. And yeah, yeah. Good old Deadwood. Wait, uh, you know, I, I mentioned we have plans uh, in the group chat to get the in the zone sports book started up in Deadwood here in the next few years. So yep. hold that, hold me to that, I guess. Right. Yes, yeah, sir. You better get to work, Dylan. We have high expectations here, bud. Sorry to sorry to tell you that. Who just changed the background, by the way? Nobody. Nope. <laughs> I think that's Restream's way of saying wrap it up, boys. Yeah. Uh, uh, what a thing. Just got off the rails. Yeah, Joey right, just let's... cut this last five minutes. Fuck it. Let's... <laughs> <laughs> it's the Joey, best give the... done. Joey, give the socials here. Let's uh let's get out of here. Instagram and Twitter at Heartland Pulse. Find us on Facebook. Just search Pulse of the Heartland. YouTube, search Pulse of the Heartland. Also, we're live Monday, Wednesday, Thursdays, 8.30 Central most of the time. Uh, find us the next day at every or on every uh, podcast platform. And as always, find us for everything on inthezone.studio. Also, everyone have a good night. You too, Ryan. Appreciate you.